The Galaxy S3 was a big success for Samsung, becoming the most sold phone of 2012. Then came the Galaxy S4, introducing remarkable features like smart paws, air gestures, and much more. In the same year of 2013, we heard rumors of the Galaxy S5 being completely different, with games changing design and futuristic features. Then on February 24th of 2014, at the Mobile World Congress, the Galaxy S5 was unveiled. However, it wasn't what we expected. We saw the same design used on the Galaxy 4 with a few tweaks, same features with a few added. Yes, we did see the heart rate monitor, fingerprint scanner, and IP67 water resistant, but other than that, it was basically the same thing. Like MKBHD said, I also think of this as a Galaxy S4S. Hello YouTube, Victor from Mary Technology, and this is my review of the Galaxy S5. Well, this is going to be a familiar design if you're coming from a previous Galaxy device. Like most of them, it's plastic all around with silver sides which is also plastic. But the first thing I'd like to take a look at is the back. And what we first noticed is the back cover's dotted, which got a lot of mixed opinions. And when I actually first saw it, I thought it was kind of odd, but after a couple months of looking at it, I've actually started to like it. Also in the back, we see this weird thing on the camera, which is a new heart rate monitor. And for me, it's kind of useless. And beside the heart rate monitor is a flash. On top is a new 60 megapixel camera that protrudes. And when you place it on a flat surface, the top right and the top left rocks. It's weird because a lot of reviewers don't mention it. Also on the back there's a speaker grill which is pretty good compared to my LG G3. The only thing I don't like about it is when you at least turn it up halfway, the back of the phone starts to vibrate which starts to irritate my fingers after watching a long movie. Anyway, on the bottom of the phone, you notice that the charging port is closed by flap, and that's because this phone is IP67 certified, meaning it's completely protected against dust, and it can go up to 1 meter underwater for a certain amount of time. Speaking of water resistant, one thing to mention is that the back cover is removable, and when you actually first open it, you notice these things around the cover, which is supposed to protect the phone from water getting inside. At the top of the phone, there's a 3.5mm headphone jack, and a cool thing is that Samsung included a pair of earbuds that sound pretty nice. Anyway, beside that, there's an IR blaster which acts as a universal remote. I actually like this way more than the one on my G3 because it's way more responsive and you don't have to directly point it at the TV to get it to work. On the front of the S5 is where we see a few changes, and the first one is, if you look up close, again you'll notice the dots, kind of like the ones we saw on the back cover. And another thing is, instead of having a menu button, now we have a multitasking button, which I'm not a fan of because I end up holding the home button to multitask, and sometimes I touch a multitask button, think of it as a menu button. That's probably going to happen to you if you're coming from a previous Galaxy device. Another thing is that the home button now has fingerprint scanner built in, and instead of just putting your finger on top of the home button to use it, kind of like the iPhone 6, well now you have to swipe your finger vertically, which means for most people you're going to have to use two hands, one holding the phone, and the other one to swipe with the finger you have registered. Speaking of registered, you can only register 3 fingers, which could be a disappointment to some of y'all considering the iPhone 6 registered 10 fingers, and I'm not a big fan of the fingerprint scanner because first, you have to swipe at the right angle and at the right speed, second, because it's not very accurate, and last, sometimes it just doesn't want to work. And like the previous predecessor, we still have a 1080p screen with a few tweaks because it's not as saturated. However, we did lose some pixels, instead of having 441 ppi like the S4, now we have 432, but don't worry because it's not noticeable. Also, I've noticed that the bezels are really big, and they are because I'm a previous LG G3 user, and it's about the same size even though the LG G3 has a 0.4 inch bigger screen. Since this is Samsung's latest Galaxy S flagship, then it should have one of the latest specs, and it sure does. The S5 is packed with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor, which is clocked at 2.5 GHz quad core, with an Adreno 330 GPU. It also has 2 GB of RAM and it comes with up to 32 GB of storage, which can be expanded up to 128 GB with the micro SD card. With all this, TouchWiz runs very smoothly, apps open and close fast, navigating is a breeze, multitasking is snappy, and gaming is enjoyable. Since this is TouchWiz, we also get a lot of gimmicky and useful features. Some of those are air view, air gestures, smart pause, toolbox, multi-window, and much more. Since there are so many features, I might just do a separate video on that, so let me know down below in the description if you like to see that. But the number one thing I don't like is the settings application. It's so confusing, colorful, and overall unorganized. The only thing I like about it is the search bar because it sometimes makes it easier to navigate. Other than that, TouchWiz has been toned down, which is great. However, since it's TouchWiz, you will encounter some lag there and there. The camera is where the S5 performs best. It has a 16 megapixel camera, which is capable of recording videos at 4K with 30 frames per second, 1080p at 60 frames per second, and 720p at 120 frames per second. 
On the front, there's a 2 megapixel camera which can record 1080p at 30 frames per second. Make sure you stay until the end of the video because there will be some picture and video samples. Car on the S5 is a 2800 million battery which is pretty good depending on how you use it. And the only downside is, it's not the best on standby time coming from my LG G3. Call quality is pretty good on the S5, however I don't make calls oftenly but when I do, the person and I sound loud and clear, although sometimes the person sounds a little bit muffled. In conclusion, the S5 may not be a big upgrade from the S4, however if you're coming from the S3 or below, then I definitely recommend it. You can get a new unlocked S5 for around $530 on Amazon, which I've been linking down below in the description. But anyway, that is basically it for this video, and actually I'm using my new mic that I talked about in my previous video, and let me know how it sounds down below in the comment section. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, feel free to give me a thumbs up down below. And also comment down below if you have any feedback. And subscribe if you'd like to see more great content like this. Bye. Now this is just a quick front facing camera test and as you can see I'm pointing the camera all the way up. Let's spin around. So I'm just going to be walking now just to test it out how it works and how good it works and how the exposure works and you guys also judge the audio so I'm just going to be walking around and the stabilization. Oh dang it's sweat outside. Yeah but that's it.